Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'm Sue Onishuk, and uh, I'm continuing the lessons uh, of the workbook of A Course in Miracles. And today we are on lesson 140. And today's lesson is only salvation can be said to cure. Just a reminder, salvation, salvation is forgiveness and atonement. And um, you know, it, it's all about accepting the atonement. So here's what it has to say for today. Cure is a word that cannot be applied to any remedy the world accept as, accepts as beneficial. What the world perceives as therapeutic is but what will is but what will make the body better. It will make a better illusion. Remember, we're not the body. When it tries to heal the mind, it sees no separation from the body where it thinks the mind exists. It forms a healing thus must substitute it forms uh, its forms of healing thus must substitute illusion for illusion one belief in sickness takes another form and so the patient now perceives himself as well he is not healed he merely had a dream that he was sick and in the dream, he found a magic formula to make him well. Yet, he has not awakened from the dream. And so his mind remains exactly as it was before. He has not seen the light that would awaken him and end the dream. What difference does the content of a dream make in reality? One either sleeps or wakens, and there is nothing in between. So this is where we want to get to in terms of practicing the course. And it is a process to remember this. And my goal is to remember it moment by moment. And I am not there, but it is my intent and my commitment. So here, here's what it is. You know, as we transfer our trust from ego's fear to the Holy Spirit's love, atonement is accepted in an instant. So again, as we transfer our trust from ego's fear to the Holy Spirit's love, atonement is accepted in the instant. So as we find ourselves slip into a belief in an illusion, you know, we can stop and immediately um, stop ourselves and say to the Holy Spirit, take this belief from me. I do not want it anymore. And, you know, in, in time, this becomes natural. When you, you find yourself caught up in the ego, in judgment, in sickness, in financial insecurity, in um, making yourself wrong, blaming, in confusion, um, those are all aspects of the ego. Attack, defense. So anytime we find ourselves there, we have the opportunity to immediately turn it over to the Holy Spirit. And there's nothing more to do. Remember the Holy Spirit does the work. And salvation here that they're speaking of is forgiveness and the atonement. And in the atonement, we are released from guilt. So again, we're released from guilt and giving it over to the Holy Spirit and the atonement occurs out of that. So, you know, this becomes natural in time as you're doing the course. And they're speaking here again that we're not a body. And, you know, we, it's saying here, we put a lot of practices. While we still believe we're a body, 
We need to put those into place. But we do a lot in terms of trying to heal the body. And, and what the Course is teaching us is that, or, or we, we want to return to health. You know, and even the duality of sickness and health. What we're doing with the Course, again, is healing our minds. It's all about healing our minds. And this is what, as we proceed with this lesson, what it's about. Even though the symptom might be relieved in terms of whatever we're experiencing with sickness, have, you know, where is, where is your mind? Has your mind shifted to the belief that you are already in a state, you know, of not being a body? You, you are already in a body that is functioning and that is, that is already healed. It is that you're, you are in a state of health. In, in the world, in God's world, there is no duality. There's no sickness and health. There's only health. There's only well-being. So, so again, as I continue on this, and it says here, you know, we're either we're either asleep or we're we are awakened. There's nothing in between. We're one or the other. So I'm going to go on from here. The happy dreams the Holy Spirit brings are different from the dreaming of the world, where one can merely dream he is awake. The dream forgiveness, the dreams forgiveness lets the mind perceive do not induce another form of sleep so that the dreamer dreams another dream. His happy dreams are herald of the dawn of truth upon the mind. We are healing the mind. You know, being in the, in the, in the God, in the mind of God, that is the truth. So I'm going to read the dream again. The dream forgives the dreams. Forgiveness lets the mind proceed. Do not induce another form of sleep so that the dreamer dreams another dream. His happy dreams are heralds of the dawn of truth upon the mind. They lead from sleep to gentle wake, gentle waking so that the dreams are gone. And thus they cure for all of here. They cure for all eternity. Atonement heals with certainty and cures all sickness. For the mind which understands that sickness can be nothing but a dream is not deceived by forms the dream may take. Sickness where guilt is absent cannot come. When we're guiltless, sickness cannot come. For it is but another form of guilt. Sickness is a form of guilt. Atonement does not heal the sick, for that is not a cure. It takes, the atonement takes away the guilt that makes the sickness possible. And that is cure indeed. For sickness now is gone with nothing left, which it can return. Again, it's all about the mind. Peace be, be, peace be to you who have been cured in God and not in the idle dreams. For cure must come from holiness, and holiness cannot be found where sin is cherished. God abides in holy temples. He is barred where sin has entered. We are holy. In our holiness is where God abides. But where we, when we are believing in sin, or that we are sinful, that and we we're not in the belief of our innocence, in that present moment, we're not awake to God. So I'm going to read that again. Peace be to you who have been cured in God and not in idle dreams, in the illusion. For cure must come. From holiness and holiness cannot be found where sin is cherished. God abides in holy temples. He is barred when, where sin has entered. Yet there is no place where he is not. And therefore sin can have no home in which to hide from his beneficence. There is no place where holiness is not. And nowhere 
sin and sickness can abide. This is the thought that cures. It does not make distinctions among unrealities, nor does it seek to heal what is not sick, unmindful where the need for healing is. This is no magic. It is merely an appeal to truth, which cannot fail to heal and heal forever. Again, we're seeking the truth. It cannot, or it is not a thought that judges an illusion by its size. It's seeming gravity or anything that is related to it, to the form it takes. It merely focuses on what it is and knows that no illusion can be real. We're, we're focusing on the real versus the unreal, which is the illusion. Let us not try today to seek to cure what cannot suffer sickness. And that's the body. So let us not try today to seek to cure what cannot suffer sickness. Healing must be sought, but where it is, and then apply to what is sick, so it, the mind, can be cured. There is no remedy the world provides that can effect a change in anything. The mind that brings illusions to truth is really changed. Again, I'm going to read that. The mind that brings illusions to truth is really changed. That, as I began at the beginning here, you know, when we bring uh, you know, whenever we are trapped in the fear of the ego, when we turn it over to the Holy Spirit, that is where, you know, we give it over and allow the Holy Spirit to do the work. And that is where our mind is changed. So, uh, okay, the mind that brings illusion to truth is really changed. There is no change but this. For how can one illusion differ from another but in attributes that have no substance, no reality, no core, and nothing that is truly different? Today we seek to change our minds about the source of sickness, for we seek a cure for all illusions, not another shift among them. We will try today to find the source of healing which is in our minds because our father placed it there for us it is not farther from us than ourselves it is as near to us as our own thoughts so so close it is impossible to lose we need but seek it, and it must be found. Remember, the ego seeks and does not fight. We will not be misled today by what appears to us as sick. We go beyond appearances today and reach the source of healing from which nothing is exempt. So when I said earlier, you know, seek the ego seeks but does not find, when we are choosing the divine mind, as it says here, you know, we will find, we will find the cure. Okay, it says again, we will not be misled today by what, what appears to us as sick. We go beyond appearances today and reach for the source of healing from which nothing is exempt. We will succeed to the extent to which we realize that there can never be a meaningful distinction made between what is untrue and real and equally untrue. Here, there are no degrees and no beliefs that what does not exist in, is truer in some forms than others. All of them are false and can be cured because they are not true. So do we lay aside our amulets, our charms and medicines, our chants and our bits of magic in whatever form they take? We will be still and listen for the voice of healing, which will cure all ills as one, restoring sameness to the Son of God, sameness to the Son of God. No voice but this can cure. 
Today we hear a single voice which speaks to us of truth where all illusions end and peace returns to the eternal, the eternal quiet home of God. We waken hearing him and let him speak to us five minutes as the day begins and end the day by listening again five minutes more before we go to sleep. Our only preparation is to let our interfering thoughts be laid aside. Not separately, but all of them as one. They are the same. We have no need to make them different and thus delay the time when, when we can hear our Father speak to us. We hear him now. We come to him today with nothing in our hands to which we cling or are attached to. With lifted hearts and listening minds, we pray. Only salvation can be said to cure. Speak to us, Father, that we may be healed. And we will feel salvation cover us with soft protection and with sleep so deep that no illusion could disturb our minds nor offer proof to us that it is real. This will we learn today. And we will say our prayer for healing hourly and take a minute as the hour strikes to hear the answer to our prayer be given us as we attend in silence and enjoy. This is the day where healing comes to us. This is the day where separation ends and we remember who we really are. So with the mind of God, there is no sickness. And that's what we are reaching for is to be with the mind of God. Sickness is of the ego. And, you know, it is, this is about the correction of our mind, the healing of our mind. So I'd like to, to um, further read from the um, workbook companion, the references below in the description of, of below this video. And it's from Ellen Watson and Robert Perry. And to read their uh, contemplation, their commentary rather on, the, on, this, on this lesson. And what they say the purpose of the lesson is again, is to seek healing for the mind, not the body. We tend to seek healing for the body rather than the mind. And, and we do so by hearing the voice of healing which God placed inside us so close that we cannot lose it. So they go on to say that the cure that the Course is talking about, again, is a healing of the mind, not of the body. And it says in the text, the bot, text um, chapter 25, the body needs no healing, but the mind that thinks it is a body is sick indeed. And then the lesson is the mind was sick that thought the body could be sick. It's the mind that's sick. So it says to seek a cure in the physical realm by any means is what the course would call magic. And calling it magic doesn't mean that we can't use it if our fear level requires it. The Course ab advocates a, a compromise approach to such circumstances. So, you know, we aren't quite there yet. So, is what it's saying here. So, we might need to use the magic. You know, I, and I believe it said it in, in the, here in, in the, uh, at some point here in the lesson that, you know, about the amulets, our charms and our medicines, our chants, you know, they're referring to it as magic, but as we're still caught up in the illusion, you know, when we're not there in totally in the divine mind, then we need to consider this. And it, of course says a compromise approach. So again, the atonement heals the mind that thinks the body can be sick. And this, the atonement, this is no magic. That is the miracle. 
And so this lesson, this lesson applies to bodily sickness, but it applies equally to any apparent problem in this material world. Any problem such as financial lack, financial scarcity, loneliness, um, you know, any um, conflict in relationships, any place where we're finding ourselves defensive, judgmental, blaming, making others wrong or self wrong, et cetera. So, okay, these problems all occur within the dream, within the illusion. And finding a magic formula with a dream is never this, the, the total solution. We are curing the symptom only and not the, 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 the disease. The root of the problem, again, is within the mind. That is what we are curing, is the mind. It said, let us not try today to seek to cure what cannot suffer sickness. Our problems are not physical in nature. We will not be misled today by what appears to us as sick. So do we lay aside, again, here it says that our amulets, our crystals, our religious medallions, our charms and our medicines, our chants and bits of magic in whatever form they take. But until we need them, they're here for us. So early in the text, Jesus makes it clear that magic is not evil. It, it's just, it just doesn't really totally work. It is only a stopgap, an attempt to rid ourselves of symptoms without really curing the disease. So yet sometimes that is the best that we can do. We have a headache and with a splitting headache, it is often difficult to quiet the mind and peacefully meditate our, ourselves well. So we use magic. We take a Tylenol or an aspirin. And there's no, and here's the thing, there is no shame in this. Those of us that are Course in Miracles students, it's not about shaming anyone or ourselves that we need to take Tylenol or an aspirin to relieve our headache. Only let us not deceive ourselves that we have really done anything to cure the disease. We have simply masked the symptom. So once we can at least relieve the symptom, then we are more able then to meditate. We're more able to do whatever we need to do in terms of remembering, oh, there it is, to remember, to turn whatever over to the Holy Spirit so that our minds can be changed. And that's where the cure comes from. It says, if you are afraid to use the mind to heal, you should not attempt to do so. If our fear level is high, we're, you know, again, back in several lessons, it said we're, we're not necessarily wanting to look at or deal with our fears. So if we're still, our fear level is still high, it's saying here, a compromise approach may be necessary. Only salvation can be said, said to cure. The magic of this world can mask symptoms, but not cure. The mind that brings illusions to the truth is really change. There is no change but this. Today, we are asked to practice just this, bringing our illusions to the truth, allowing our guilt to be removed from our minds. This cures and nothing else will cure. There is no place where God is not, and this includes our minds. Sin would keep him out, but since he is everywhere, sin can be anywhere. Sin cannot be in our minds. Sin cannot, I'm gonna read that again, because see, I've said this often, and, and so often even when I'm facilitating courses, how tricky the ego is, it gives you the opposite word. So I'm gonna read that again. Again, there is no place where God is not, and in this includes our minds. Sin would keep him out, but since he is everywhere, sin cannot be anywhere. Sin cannot be in our minds. This is the 
thought that cures. Sin and therefore sickness cannot be real because God is in us. We make it real. It's not real. Again, we're choosing here between the real and the unreal or what is true or, un, uh, or untruth. And here, the truth is that, you know, God has, has not left us. And what we think is sin cannot be so. What we think is sin is only something to be corrected. It's only a mistake because we were thinking from our ego mind. And we are being taught over and over again here in the course that we can correct that with the Holy Spirit. In our awareness of his presence, when we are present to God, guilt disappears. And with it, the cause of sickness. And that's what we're doing with the course is we are, you know, it is about our unconscious guilt that we are healing because we believe that we are separated from God. And we believe in that, that we are guilty and we need to be punished. So that is lesson 140. And uh, we will be starting an, another review in the next video. And it's review four. This is our fourth review. So um, I look forward to being with you for the next video. In the meantime, uh, as we're concluding here, uh, appreciate it if you would please like, uh, comment, even put a heart or thumbs up or whatever in the comment section. It helps, again, I can't say it enough, it helps the algorithms. And also please share this video out uh, so that this uh, community here, uh, this YouTube channel can expand and grow. And there are others that are looking for this for their lives, the Course in Miracles. They may not look for it in terms of it being called the Course in Miracles, but what is in this Course in Miracles, they are searching for. So please share it out, be generous in doing so. And um, if you haven't, excuse me, already, please subscribe. All right. Again, that builds up the algorithms as well. Okay. Uh, I look forward to being with you for the next video for review uh, five. No, I'm sorry, review four and lesson 141. All right. Till then, have a love filled day. And from my heart to yours, I send you much love. Bye for now.